Today, we're talking about embedded C versus C. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Today, I want to clear up a few things that are circulating around the internet. The topic for today is embedded C or embedded C++. They're not the same, but for our purposes today, they might as well be. This applies equally to both of them. As many of you know, I do a lot of embedded programming, a lot of embedded systems work, and so I'm always talking to students about embedded stuff. And students often come to me and say, you know, I'm not so sure about embedded C. I'm good with C, but not embedded C. Do you know any resources that I could look to to try to understand the differences? And then, of course, trying to be helpful, I start looking around the internet to see if there are any good resources out there, and I start finding a lot of misinformation. And so hopefully today we can clear that up. Because a lot of the information out there sort of gives you the feeling that embedded C and C are two different languages, and embedded C is like C, but scary. So just to give you a sense of what I'm talking about, let's look at a quick example. Now, I don't want to name names or call out any particular videos, websites, or content creators. I really appreciate what people are doing out there most of the time. I appreciate how vulnerable it feels to put stuff out there on the web and have people attack it and critique it. And I definitely don't want to add any stress or any of that nonsense out there. But I also want my students to get solid information. Now, at the time of filming, if you searched for embedded C versus C, this is what you'll find, or at least it's what I found. I hope by the time you view this, the post has been updated. But it's just an example. If you go through the other search results, the blog results, Stack Overflow discussions, and the videos, you're going to see a lot of this stuff repeated over and over again. Now, I'm not sure where this is all coming from, but I wanted today to just go through this text and see what we can do to set the record straight. Okay, so if we look at this post, they start with some generic C stuff right here. A few of the claims in this text is debatable, but for the purpose of this video, it's fine. We're just going to ignore this. Then we start into the embedded C down below. Now, a lot of stuff in this paragraph is misleading or just wrong. For example, embedded C is not an extension of the C language. And this list of extensions down here, these these ex claimed extensions, none of them are actually a change in the language. They're rather just how it's used. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Then they say this embedded C program has five layers of basic structures, and they basically tell us things that are true of every C program out there. So again, this is nothing new. This is just C. So if any of you go out to try to fix this article, this probably belongs in the previous section. And then we come down to this rather confusing statement here about cross-platform development and used on multiple platforms. Now, I think what they're trying to say here is that because microcontrollers typically don't have a lot of memory, we can't put our compiler on the device our program is going to run on. So instead, we compile it on one machine, and then we copy it over to another machine where it runs. But just to be clear, you can do this sort of cross-compiling on laptops and desktops and servers. And again, it has nothing to do with the language. So now let's slide down here and just see the side-by-side -side comparison, these differences between C and embedded C. Now, the first two points here are talking about how the language is used. These are not language differences. The second point is either true or false for both, depending on what you consider high level or low level. Compared to Python, C is definitely low level. Compared to assembly, it's definitely high level. And the point is that whatever you consider it to be, high or low, embedded doesn't change anything. Next down here, we're seeing that C is a hardware independent language. That's pretty funny, actually. Um, this is the same language that's typically called human readable assembly. Yes, some C code is more portable than others, but that's true for embedded C too. Because embedded C and C++ programs can use hardware abstraction layers too, where they try to abstract away the hardware and allow you to move code from one platform to another. Just look at Arduino, which uses C++. Embedded devices can also run operating systems, including real-time operating systems, but also things like Linux, which is pretty general purpose. And that makes this next point confusing and basically not true as well. Now, if we come down to their compiler claims, again, these are really not true. I typically use GCC and Clang slash LLVM and all their associated tools. So these are the standard compilers. I use these for my embedded development all the time. And some of these are actually kind of funny. Like, I'm not sure if anyone's actually used Borland Turbo C in the last decade. If they have, it's like running Atari games. You're probably using an emulator or something. I mean, if somebody knows where you can find a version of Borland Turbo C, I'd love to get my hands on it, just for archaeology's sake. And yes, it's worth mentioning that there are plenty of proprietary embedded compilers like Greenhill and Keel, but you don't have to use them if you don't want. Then down here, if we look at usability and application, so we're looking at differences here in how they're how usable they are, or application, whatever, whatever that really even means. 
probably just how they're being used. Here, while well, we're talking about a free format of program coding, I honestly don't know what that means. And this formatting depends upon the type of processor that is used. Not really. I mean, some of your actions may depend on the processor you're running on, so your actual code, what you can do. But that's true on your laptop as well, especially if you get into things like vector processing instructions. Like, there's processor-specific stuff on my laptop. Now, what about it's very easy to read and modify the C language, and it is not easy to read and modify the embedded C language. And both statements are sometimes true and sometimes false. The world is full of horrible code, including standard C code that exists on laptops and desktops and servers. And I've also come across some beautiful embedded code in my day. Okay, what about bug fixing is is very easy in the C language program and bug fixing is complicated in the embedded C language program. Again, simply not true. I've fixed some delightfully easy embedded bugs and I could show you some doozies that I've tracked down on laptops and servers. Yes, it's true. Debugging embedded applications is often more challenging, but that's because of no screens, limited memory, maybe no operating system. It doesn't have anything to do with the language. And then if we come down here, basically the rest of these, they're, they're basically all false. And then down here at the bottom, you get application comments, basically saying that they're used for different applications. And well, yeah, but that's the difference between embedded systems and non-embedded systems. None of this has anything to do with the language. Okay, I think that's enough griping about this. Um, I'm feeling really tired. Folks, embedded C and embedded C++ are simply C and C++ applied to embedded systems. But wait, I hear protests. Some of you are saying, wait a minute, what about this program? Surely the ability to just write directly into a register like this isn't plain old normal C? Well, normal, of course, is a very subjective term, but let's look at how they do it. Okay, this code was written for an MSP430 FR5994 microcontroller made by Texas Instruments, and it simply toggles a pin. It's basically just trying to blink a light or something like that. And yes, this can look a little bit intimidating because I'm directly accessing registers in memory to control the state of pins, and you're thinking, I've never done that before on my laptop. Maybe this is a different language. Well, what's going on here is a lot of microcontroller manufacturers, like Texas Instruments, provide a unified memory space. That means that all of these device registers, basically everything that you can access in your programs, have a given memory address. Now, this is just like the addresses that you use or your compiler uses for your variables and your code. And this allows us to do some interesting things. Okay, so to make this work, TI provides a bunch of files for this microcontroller that I'm using. So like I said before, um, this is the MSP430FR5994. That's the one I'm using, just in case you wanted to look this up yourself. But of course, you can see there's a lot of different chips and they each have different files that come with them. But so, so let me take you through some of the files that they provide. So if we look at this header file, this is the header file for the platform I'm using. So up here, we got a bunch of copyright information and license information. Down here, we've got some if def guards and, and some code version information, that's great. Then we have some constants we're defining. These are just bits basically allowing you to easily say, I want this particular bit in a mask or something like that. And we've got some status register bits. These are all helpful when you wanna actually interact with the processor status, but nothing too scary here, okay? Now, if we get down here, this is where we start talking about our registers. So these are like our ADC control register or our interrupt registers. These are all basically just different registers, different ways that we can interact with our processor. These are the things that cause people a little bit of frustration and fear. And maybe we look here and we see this SFR underscore W function or macro. We're not really sure at this point what it is, but that looks a little funny, like what's going on here? And if we wanna see what's going on here, let's jump over to this iomacros.h file. And this has a bunch of different macros that are in use, but specifically you can see this F, this SFRW macro basically is just saying whatever you pass in, we're defining that as an extern volatile unsigned int. Now I have videos on both extern and volatile if you aren't sure about those keywords, but this just means that these registers are defined as integers or characters or long ints. But the point is, is so far this is still just C, right? This is just C, we're just defining variables, but how of course do we map these variables to a specific address in our microcontroller? Well, to do that, we use a linker script. This is the main linker script that's provided. Remember that your linker is the thing that decides where to put everything in your program. You write the program, your compiler converts it to object code, your linker is what decides where everything goes in memory. And the linker script that I'm using here, you notice it describes the different memory locations that my processor has. And we're not gonna spend a lot of time today on linker scripts in this video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more about linker scripts. 
But the point is, if I jump all the way down here to the bottom, uh, it's quite a lot of stuff in here, but down here at the bottom, you see that we have an include, we include this symbols file, right? So if we jump over to that symbols file, that's just an extension of our linker script. But specifically, this basically maps our symbols to locations. So this basically tells the linker to stick certain symbols at certain memory addresses, which not coincidentally just happened to be the addresses where the corresponding registers exist in the processor's memory space. So now those extra and volatile unsigned ints are placed strategically in memory so they will control what we need them to control. But the point is, at this point, this is still all just C stuff. Yes, we're doing some things with linker scripts and macros that you probably don't normally do in your average terminal program, but we're not using a different language. Embedded C is just C. Now, of course, that said, embedded programming can be very different from programming on laptops, desktops, and servers. The programming style can be a bit different. It often is a bit different. We often do more direct hardware access. Our code is often less portable. We often take different approaches when testing and debugging. Of course, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more about debugging and testing on embedded systems. But I hope this helps clear up the whole embedded C thing. Please like this video if it was useful. Subscribe so you don't miss all those future videos that you know are coming. And now I think it's about time you get back to that programming project. I'll see you in a week.